Hello, friend. Welcome. Carm Capriato, Town Hall Academy 163. Now, this episode is going to be an important tool in encouraging stronger friendships in the automotive aftermarket. Now, I believe you will share this episode with the shop down the street. If we work together, all, all we can do is elevate our profession. If we're working together, if we're working against each other, we're, you know, we're on a race to the bottom. Welcome, automotive aftermarketers, to a Remarkable Results Radio Town Hall Academy. Listen to learn just one thing from today's episode on your journey to remarkable results. Hello, friend Carm Capriato, the Automotive Aftermarket Podcast Guy. Hey, this is your weekly Town Hall Academy, a summit for the forever automotive aftermarket student. You know, we're in constant motion delivering vibrant talk. You know, this pure form of audio aftermarket wisdom makes your challenges more palatable. Now, we bring this audio food for thought to you as a cure for your aftermarket schooling. Hey, the Town Hall Academy is so proud to partner with Shopware. Give your customer and staff the end-to-end digital experience that they deserve. Now, it's likely time to upgrade your management system. Now, you know you've been thinking about it to Shopware. Get more profit in less time. Now, find out how. Get a free live demonstration and review shop owner testimonials at shop-ware.com. Shopware. More time. More profit. You know that my love of audio and my passion to change the lives of others is what drives every podcast as we deepen the connection with you to help make a difference in your business and your life. Now, to expand upon the podcast ecosystem, please sign up for my newsletter and join me on social media. You'll find that on the website. And also be sure that you subscribe to the Town Hall Academy on your favorite listening app. Spread the word to your friends. Say, hey, did you know that you can go to the show page for this episode, copy the talking points, and then use them as a meeting agenda? Yup, every podcast, over 745 in the content library. Now, that's the largest aftermarket podcast library on the planet, and there, it's there for your edification. Shame on you if you don't use it. Some of the smartest and essential voices and the latest and best trending topics to keep you grounded yet moving forward are right here. Hey, the talking points, by the way, for this episode, remarkableresults.biz slash A163. Hey, we're talking about one of the near and dear to my heart topics, getting to know your competitor. We cover all the bases in this discussion. Now, do me a favor. After you listen, get in your vehicle, drive to a local shop you don't know, go in, introduce yourself, and start a dialogue with the owner. Now, if they don't get what you're there for, tell them about this Town Hall Academy podcast, episode 163. Write it down, ask them to listen to it, then call you. This may be just the start of a great lifelong friendship while you are helping to elevate the entire aftermarket. Hey, do your part so that all ships rise. And oh, by the way, write to me when you do this. I want to know. Carm at RemarkableResults.biz. I want to introduce my, my team here so that, you know, they can join in my conversation. Brad Pellman, Pellman's Automotive in Boulder, Colorado, ASE Master Certified and has his AAM designation. So Brad Pellman's here. Paul Marquat, shop owner in Northwoods Auto Techs in Rhinelander, Wisconsin, a Napa trainer, and was the Napa ASE Tech of the Year in 2010. Hi, Paul. Hey, good morning, guys. And Peter Foreman from Integra Tire, Langley, British Columbia. Hello. Second generation shop owner, Integra Tire Peter, been up at his uh, in his neck of the woods and hung out with him. And thank you all for having graced our airwaves here with your presence. Now, before we jump into this great, great topic, make your competitor your friend. And boy, this is an overdue topic. We've been talking about it on the show, but we never focused on it. Brad, let's start with you on this topic. One of the biggest thoughts or muscle memories that we have to have on the topic, make your competitor your friend, is to realize how much business there really is out there. Right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this, anytime I talk to a shop owner who seems like they're concerned about the guy down the street or something, that's one of the first things I bring up is, hey, um, you know, how many cars drive by your shop every day? You know, can you work on all of those? Could you work on all those in a year? 
And the, the answer is virtually always no. I, there's no way I could work on those. And I'm like, well, and what is the problem exactly? Because <laughs> it's not the guy across the street. So, um, you know, there's more than enough cars out there for us, for the dealerships, the manufacturers, every, anybody that wants to work on cars. They're all out there. We just have to do it right so that they come to us. When you do the math, and by the way, I'm this big believer in taking out the yellow pad and doing the math. And sitting down with your friend and says, hey, uh, I, I went to the DMV and I found out that there's X number of cars in our market. And I also counted all the shops that I know of in the area. And I did the math. I took the number of shops divided by the number of cars. And here's what I got. We each, all of us, have to fix this many cars. Can you fix that many cars? And that's what hits it. So when, we, when you think about the fact that there's so much opportunity out there that we should be worried about being ugly with each other. Hey, I, I don't want to use the word hate, but we just had a uh, for the record rant on this past Monday about, you know, why, why are we so down on each other? What are we doing this for? Why are we trashing each other? This is absolutely crazy. This just can't keep happening. And it starts with getting to know your buddy down the road. So I was on this big rant a while ago. Please stop me if, I, if I'm long in the tooth on this. But hey, hey, Joe, let's go have coffee. What the hell do you want? Peter, you... I just want to have coffee. Yeah. Yeah, that's all coffee. I want to do is have coffee. What just do you want? Just coffee, yeah. man. <laughs> it's just coffee. Uh, you want to steal one of my secrets. And you know that he doesn't have any. Yeah. <laughs> And you know that he doesn't have any. And his, and his secrets are he's really struggling. And he doesn't want to admit it and get up and out of his way. Each of you guys understand and get that whole networking piece. And, and how you have learned so much of what you know and the success rate that you're at. Because you learned it from your peers. Absolutely. And there's the, uh, the saying, and I'm sure it's been said many times. I think I know I've heard it before, the R&D, right? Rip off and duplicate. <laughs> and and uh, I use that all the time. And, you know, you, you talked initially about uh, COVID-19 in the beginning and, and uh, our good friends, you know, I'm Scott Waddle from Precision Auto is just recently, he posted a letter stating what they're doing um, to uh, reduce the risk of that in their shop. And uh, I'm pretty much going to use that same letter word for word because I was trying to figure out how to word it and he just did such a good job. And it's okay because he's my friend and he's probably happy I'm going to use it. I'm not going to use it exactly, but um, that's what we do. We share things with each other to be be better, right? And that's how friends work. Right. We don't need to reduplicate everything. It's like a shop handbook. Like that was a big one for us is... Um, we didn't have one and, and we didn't even know where to begin. And then all of a sudden friends of ours through um, some of the groups that we're in started offering theirs up just left and right. And it was, it was phenomenal. I mean, it saved us months worth of work. There's a danger in that. I just want to remind everyone because how you run your shop and the other guy who runs his shop is not the same. And if you totally duplicate a handbook, you're going to get yourself in some kind of trouble. I just want you to be warned on that. Yeah, right. No, but it's it, just as a footprint to get going. It's a footprint. It's an outline. It's a guide. Yes. I was going to say, same thing. You need to make it yours. I, I've looked at other people's handbooks as well. I've used it as a guideline to help create my own, um, which is ongoing and always changing as as the shop is developing and growing and evolving with uh, technology and things like that. We have to change it, right? As you go. I want to stay with Brad for one more talking point here, and, and, and then I want to just totally open this up to some of the, some of the uh, what to do's and, and how to do it. Uh, but uh, Brad, you've told me before, it's better to have friends than enemies. Absolutely. You know, none of us are incapable of uh, making mistakes or getting jammed up on a job. Um, stuff happens, right? Uh, so having a team or a group of shop owners who have maybe already gone through something you've got, you're going through now, or maybe have solved the problem that you're trying to solve right now and being able to go to them because you're friends and you get along and you understand that you're all there to help each other. Um, that's, there's no price tag for that, right? When you need that help and somebody's willing to step up and give it to you because you have an, a relationship with them, uh, it's, it's a great place to be. Um, you know, camaraderie in our industry is, is huge. And you see it all the time at vision with the people that go to vision and things like that. And people that go to the events, but in a lot of times, those are the same people that we see over and over again. Right. Um, 
if we can get that to happen across the whole continent or a whole United States mm-hmm. where everybody's getting along, everybody understands that we're all here to doing the same hard job, trying to work together. Um, we can share tools, we can share ideas, we can share um, knowledge about how to handle employee situations. Um, it's just a, a wealth of information um, that's out there for us. That we don't have to solve all our own problems. Somebody, it's just like a car. Somebody has already solved that problem somewhere. All you got to do is reach out and find the answer you know, that somebody else has solved it. And I don't, maybe I'm not beating my head nearly as hard. It's a great point, Paul. I want to ask you this. Um, and, and Peter, guys, you, you're all problem solvers. I really think that's how we all started in business. Okay. We were problem solvers. One of the things I love to do, I love to solve problems. Love it. Give me a problem and let me think it through. So here I am in the shop and I've got a problem, right? If I'm friends with the guy down the road, the guy three blocks over, the guy in the the community over there, we know each other, and I realize, oh my God, how do I know that my scope isn't wrong? God, who do I, you you think outside the box, where can I get another identical one here? Where can I get this tool? And I always wanted to buy that puller, but I never did, but I know I toured Charlie's shop and I saw one there and, oh my God, I'm in deep trouble. This car's doing two hours. What do I do? You can't solve a problem if you don't have resources, right, Peter? Absolutely. We had a Google sheet between a whole bunch of shops of all of our tool lists at one point. Um, it's since got a little bit old. We maybe should update it, talk to our friends again about doing it. If we had a, you know, a timing chain kit that we didn't have the tool for, um, we could look up and see, oh, this guy's got it. He's a few blocks down. So I have a message, hey, using the tool, can we borrow it a little bit? And it went back and forth. And we still use the one, two, three rule, right? You guys know in the shop, you borrow it once, twice, the third time, you probably right. shouldn't buy it. <laughs> but, um, it. For those one-offs, it's great to have that list. And it's been really handy. Our uh, business development group right now is just starting to do that um, because of the same thing. I mean, every time you get a vehicle, and it's a specialty tool. And, you know, when you talk about, uh, Peter, talk about timing chain kits, you know, yeah. you, hate to, you hate to buy the timing chain kit, use it once, and then it sits in your toolbox. But the guy up the street, your uh, colleague up the street needs it, and then he goes out and buys it. Uh, we had a situation a couple of years ago. Uh, we took on a, uh, a fleet uh, of vehicles. Uh, we didn't have a scan tool to get into some of the vehicles that we're working on. So I uh, got a friend that's got a shop up the street. We've been friends for 40 years. Stopped us and asked him, I said, what are you guys using for scan tools for uh, your uh, mid-sized trucks? He says, you know, Paul, he says, we don't do enough of them to justify buying a scan tool. I said, you know, I'm in the same position. I said, Don, I said, why don't we just buy one together? Let's yeah. put the cost of it. We'll split the updates of it. It's going to be at your shop. It's going to be at my shop. We just, you know, and we're, we're covered. And so we were able to buy equipment together. These are, this is what, well, this is why we build relationships with other shops and um, dealerships. Um, I try to be on a good terms with all my local dealerships because there are times and they've been generous enough to lend me that specialty tool every now and then. You know, I just make sure when I return it, it comes with a couple dozen donuts and return it at break time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but, you know, there's a time down the road that they may need something from me. Hey, we got a Volkswagen and we can't we can't get a code out of. We don't know how to work on us. Uh, bring it down. We'll, we'll pull the codes out. We'll help you out as much as we can. It's a it's a win win situation. Guys, I, I really like what you're talking about here. But let me let me spin this a minute. How, how Do you share business acumen together? Uh, ideas, marketing, uh, challenges you have, uh, hiring, firing, benefits, that's all that? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, I, 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 I know a couple of shops are looking for techs. We're, we're not currently looking for techs, but I told them, I said, if I get a good tech coming in, I'll send them up to you. Yeah, I actually had my, I hired a tech about a year and a half ago, thanks to a neighbor uh, north of me. Uh, he had a guy come in with a resume. I kind of was looking for somebody. Um, he sent him down my way and, and he's been a great addition to the shop. And uh, it was probably a better fit for my shop than he was for the other uh, the other shop. Um, he probably wouldn't have lasted there just based on the way that they work and how they do things. Not that they run a bad shop. They're different than us. Um, so uh, Corey, the owner of the other shop, realized this person is a better fit with me, and he knew I was looking for somebody and it was just a better mm-hmm. option. That's been great. That was fantastic for me. Yeah. What other ideas are you sharing besides the tools, uh, Brad? Marketing. We, we share a lot of marketing stuff. You know, 
uh, you, of course, you know, Judy, um, uh, she's a mile away from me and, uh, she runs a great shop and, um, for 15 years now, we've been sharing ideas, especially her and my wife who handle the marketing programs just on how to, how they're reaching their customers, how we're reaching ours. We go back and forth. Now we, we have made a point of not necessarily using the same company so that we're not that company isn't having to deal with competing in our own market. If you had a social media company and you, you realize that you would have different ones so that you didn't look alike. Right. We try to do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We don't want to, you know, we, we each have our own identity. You have your own identity, but yet the ideas are the same, but the resources could be different. Right. Or should exactly. be different. Yes. Okay. Yep. That's cool. You know, and how you handle all that. So, and it's great. I mean, I can't, I can't say enough about the relationships that we have in Boulder. So, Hey, Carm here. Now think about your shop management system. Isn't it the center of your business? And most of us are running on systems that are decades old. And you know who you are. It's time to change and get the benefits that a modern system can bring to your business. Shopware Shop Management is a cloud-powered management system that gives your staff and your customers the end-to-end digital experience that they expect. With Shopware, you can see every job and view work updates in real time and you can manage your shop from anywhere with any device and that's becoming more important than ever you'll see your customers interact with digital work orders and buy services from you more often with less effort you can earn more parts profit with just the click of one button and with less paper too you'll also get improved efficiency from your staff do this request a live tour of shopware at shop-ware.com look it's time to make the switch and get started making more money with a powerful modern business tool designed to solve your biggest challenges i really got on a kick about three years ago about this whole let, let buy me coffee right and i called it adopt a shop and i never really pushed it out and did anything heavy with it but I get closer and closer to wanting to do this on a, on a national basis. But the, the, the whole purpose of reaching out to get someone engaged that's in your marketplace and, and to buy them a cup of coffee is, you know, what's in it for you? Well, I just want to say hello. I'm, I, I struggle every day just like you do. Well, I, I'm not interested. We are creating right now this podcast episode that I had never thought of until right now Okay, listen, don't want to have coffee. Do me a favor. Go to this website, RemarkableResults.biz, and search for episode 163 and listen to it. And then I'm going to call you in a week after you listen to it. And he's going to hear the -the behind-the-scenes story of the value and the power of friendships and networking. Because we talked about it on the show, but we've never really had a narrowed focus episode to explain to someone because we all care so much about our industry and elevating the people that need elevation. You guys are doing it for yourselves every day. Think of the learning that you, you and your team are going through. And think of the training that the competitor is not getting, both on the business, the service, and the technical side of our, of our industry. Uh, this this virus, these cancellations is going to change our dynamic immensely. I don't think we really realize the impact this is going to have when we are starting to realize that people may not be driving the kind of miles that they are. I mean, I don't know what the impact is going to be, but we could sure sit down in a think tank and figure out what we better start doing. Better to do it together than all alone on an island. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Peter, you learned all this networking stuff from your dad. Yeah, you know, for me, it's interesting uh, when you talk about how do you create this. I just, I don't, I can't think of how to create it because it's just, it, it is, it was, it's all I knew. Um, stories of new shops opening up in my area where another shop might come visit them and say, hey, just so you know, there's going to be this, uh, this older Kiwi guy who's going to come in and he's just going to show up. He's going to walk into your shop. He's going to start giving you statements about what you're doing wrong or how he can help you with this, or this tool is not very good. You should buy this tool instead and then kind of just walk out and things and, and he'll just come in randomly. That's what my dad used to do. And he started to really build um, a culture of everybody getting together and doing things. And it kind of grew from there. We, we've we got, um, you mentioned earlier about um, our local uh, company, trade show parts company, Lord Co parts. Um, their rep in our local area did a really good job of creating um, social environments, uh, 
uh, golf tournaments or just barbecues, um, things like that, where all the shops came together and got to talk. And, you know, we talked about these challenges that we have. These challenges, we realized, oh, we all are having these same challenges. This is interesting. And But you figured it out. How did you figure it out? And, and, it, and it just becomes natural. And you start talking, you start visiting, you start going out for lunches and like you said, buy a coffee for people. It, it, uh, it's really all I know. So it's interesting how to create it. I don't, I don't know how to create it, I guess. Well, I probably do. You just show up at somebody's door and start talking to them. But uh, I think you completely uh, changed my strategy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, screw the idea of saying, let's go have coffee. Just walk in just like your dad did. Go to the shop and visit them. Hey, how you doing? They may be busy and off you go, but uh, yeah. It's it's one of the things I I don't do as good a job of that as my dad did I okay. gotta say but uh, but the relationships are built already so maybe I don't have to do it as much but I probably should. What, what <laughs> you do know? you guys think of that? Just walk in. I think I think it's a great idea. I mean, uh, the the phone call the phone call is a little impersonal, but the walking in and just saying, "Hey, Bob, you know, just drive by, stop in, and see how things are going." And you know, I'm just on the street. If you need anything, give me a holler. It's uh, you know, just checking in, seeing, seeing what's up, see what's happening. Yeah, or even break the ice. Hey, I heard you about that new stamp-on scanner. I'm looking at buying it. What are you thinking about it, right? Yeah. Get their opinion and build value in their opinion, which might also make them want to know your opinion, right? So. Right, exactly. You know, don't come in there, you know, trying to tell them what to do, but ask them. You know, <laughs> don't do what my dad did. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> but, you know, I agree. You know, just ask, you know, ask him. He said, you know, maybe, maybe come and say, man, business has been really slow for me. I said, yeah, I see you guys are always filled up. What are you guys doing? You know, you mind sharing that? You know, I think everybody is so caught up in their own little worlds. They're afraid that somebody's going to steal an idea from them. And like you said earlier, Carm, there are so many vehicles out there to work on that. There's just absolutely no way we could work on them all. And there's no reason. I don't want to work on them. It's oh. called blinders. Yeah, exactly. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I had a new, sh I had a new shop open up across the fence from me and I just, I kind of popped in there one day and I said, uh, how's it going? You know, um, I've got some old equipment that I'm not using anymore that in, it's, you're welcome to have it. If you'd like to have it, if it helps you a spring compressor and stuff. And he was very excited about it and took it and, we asked, we traded information about what I was using for uh, software and things like that. So there's, it's easy to introduce yourself. You just have to do it. Yeah. So the, the, the overall shot is this. If you ever are going to be negative, Brad, on any shop, don't expect to walk in, shake a hand and say, let's work together and do some stuff. <laughs> Absolutely not. No, I, and so, and it's more than just you, right? Like you have to you have to let all your employees know that you just don't do this here. Right. We don't talk about other shops. We don't, we don't criticize other work. You know, we just, we, we state what needs to be done. We show them why, and we take care of the problem, but we're not here to uh, crush other shops because that doesn't make us look good. It makes us seem small. And um, you, so you're hurting yourself when you talk, when you, people don't realize it, but when you start, slamming somebody else the person that you're talking to is sitting there going you know who is this guy to tell to say this you know you know what secrets does he have in his closet um so there's just no there's no there's no reason to downplay other shops to try to hurt their credibility you should focus on your own professional set of skills and how great you are and and talk about how good the industry is and and how rare it is if something does go wrong and we're here to help fix it. Those are the things that we got to focus on. I agree with you on that, Brad. And one of the traps we got to be careful is the customers, uh, especially if they've had a bad experience at another shop, will come in and sometimes try to trap you or trip you into it saying, oh yeah, they really screwed it up. They shouldn't have done that. And, you know, I'll defend, I'll defend every single shop in my town. He says, you know, maybe they just had a bad day. It's easy to miss that. He says, but, you know, we're here to help you. But if you want, you know, if it's a warranty issue, we try to send them back to the original shop and say, hey, you know, this is something that, you know, it was a, you know they, they, they might have messed up or, you know, they might have just been having a bad day. Give them a chance to go ahead and fix it. It's, the answer is I yes. know Charlie down the road. He's good yeah. with people. I know his people. You know, hell, we've had dinner together. This, uh, please go there and get that taken care of. Well, let, me, let me call him for you. That's exactly the relationship we have with the Haglands. Um, we, you know, Boulder isn't a giant town, but we're two of the bigger shops in it. 
And when we get some kind of a concern or problem from their shop that comes to us, that's the exact conversation we have. It's like, hey, you know, I know those guys. They're really good. Tell me about what happened. Why, you know, why are you not going back there? You know, can I take it over there? Do you mind if I contact the owner? Um, or do you want to go back yourself? It's, you know, you're just supporting, you're making yourself. And when you do that, honestly, look, you're earning that customer. There's a good chance you're earning that customer. Okay. Now maybe they do go back to the shop and, and that's great. If they did, you did the right thing. Okay. But there's a good chance they're looking at you at that point going, wow, you know, this person is really a stand up guy and he's telling me the truth. And, you know, maybe I'm just going to stay here because uh, it's closer to my office or whatever the reason might be. There's an aside to that too. When, you, when you're when you friends with all of your local shops around there and you've got a customer that's come in and, and first time and they mention a few things about some shops that you say they're, oh, they ripped me off or they screwed this up or whatever. And you're like, yeah, I know that guy. He's a good guy. And I know that shop. He's a pretty good guy. I think you might be a bad customer. <laughs> you know, like, so you you kinda, might be the problem. Yeah, so I don't know if I want to be in that pile of invoices that you're complaining about, right? <laughs> yeah, and we've, we've actually have done that exact same thing, Peter. If we've had a bad experience and we've all had that customer that no yeah. matter what you do, they're never going to be happy and you find <laughs> out they've been to other shops and they have that same issues, I'll call my colleagues and say, hey, watch out for this guy. If he comes, if he comes yeah. knocking at your door, um, I'm not telling you not to take him, but just be careful. It would be nice if there was a Google review for customers, right? Yeah. Or like how Uber is, you got to you gotta rate your rider <laughs> and the driver. Yeah, yeah. yeah we exactly. didn't do a customer rate. Um, you know, I'm from Buffalo, yeah. and I remember, you know, we, we I have a uh, a monthly breakfast with uh, with a whole group of independents, and uh, and, and I, I can't remember a year ago, everybody was going around the room, there were a dozen guys at the table, and they were all talking about the same, co- wait a minute. Was it this car? And did she, she looked <laughs> yeah. like this, and it ended up that uh, this 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 couple went to almost every one of the shops with a similar problem, and then and it, 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 they weren't good experiences. They were end up getting bad reviews, and it, there, there was an angle to it. I don't remember what it was, but it's not good. It, it goes back to the fact that people were the shops were talking, and it's almost like pick up the phone and says, "Hey, I want to let you know." You know, if, if only one needs to get ripped off, not not another dozen. And the only way you prevent that is by being united, being a team, working with each other. I wrote down something here called common sense. I wrote down something here called it's just logical to want to do this. I, I don't understand why we look at competition down the road. And Peter, you had someone, a friend, move what, within five blocks of you? Yeah, I just had a, a friend in the shop. They've been around for 35 years, I think. So similar kind of stages, us, second generation shop. And uh, unfortunately, um, his property got sold, so he had to move. And he was about five miles away. I'm sorry, I'm Canadian. I'm not sure on distances, but <laughs> eight kilometers or something. And uh, and he's literally, he's a block and a half away from me now. Um, and uh, I kind of look at it, actually, it's a pretty good thing. At first, I was like, oh, he's he's a good shop. He's going to be tough competition. But then I start looking, and it's like, well, if if we surround our area with really great shops like him and myself and uh, a couple other shops in the area, we're probably going to be doing a better job, right? And, and you think about, I can't remember what the book is, but you know, you're the average of your five closest friends. Um, you could probably do that with your shops in your area as well. Um, so in the end, it's going to be a good thing. And, and uh, I'm looking forward to having him as a neighbor and knowing that we can continue to, to rise the tide, right? I think as they say. <laughs> Interesting. So where's the best automotive repair? Langley, BC. No, wait a minute. Where's, where's the best automotive repair? Langley, BC. Wouldn't it be cool, you know, where you guys, um, uh, Northwood, in Rhinelander, Wisconsin. Where's the best automotive repair? Rhinelander, Wisconsin. I mean, everyone there is great. Yeah, yeah. That'd be, I mean, that'd be perfect. You know, and, and to build on what you said, Peter, you know, if we work together, all, all we can do is elevate our profession. If we're working together, if we're working against each other, we're, you know, we're on a race to the bottom. Why are we in this position, guys? Why? Why do we need to talk about this? We need to talk about this because we need to have an open discussion. We need we we need to have people across the country start to realize that uh, we're we're all in the business to try to do the same thing. We're trying to act out a living, make a living, fix vehicles, uh, uh, 
customers' vehicles, fix the problems, get them on the road, and we can't do them all. And we got to realize that there's other shops that are just struggling along with us. And if we're constantly fighting against each other, we're never gonna we're never gonna grow as an industry. But if we work together, um, you know, I my wife runs an electrical contracting business. She works very well with other electricians, and because they know they can't handle all the work, um, and they're kind of saying they'll even share employees uh, back and forth if they got a big job. Oh. They'll say, you know what, I need a couple I need a couple electricians. You know, I thought, why would that be great if we were slow and another shop was uh, busy? Hey, you know what? I got a technician. I'll let you let you borrow him for a week. <laughs> yeah, actually, a group of friends. Uh, it was a couple of years ago. Um, one of the shops ended up just having. He had a a rock star walk in the door, and he just had to hire the person. He couldn't not as a technician. Um, as a guy he'd been looking for forever. But he was too heavy, and he needed to let another person go, and it, and it broke his heart because he, he all of his staff is really good. Um, before he even gave the gentleman his notice, he found him another job within our shop of friends, and uh, so that guy was able to go and work at the other place. He was never had no downtime, didn't have to worry about collecting EI, just able working it. And that's another thing we can do: helping our you know helping our staff by having a good set of friends, making sure that they're taken care of too. Huge benefit there. Wow. Yeah. Love that. Hey, guys, uh, why should my competitor be my friend? Your friends uh, your friends help you. And do you want to have uh, an enemy out there as a competitor uh, that is not helping you um, or is hindering you out there and bad-mouthing you? If you're friends with them and helping them, they're also going to do the same for you. So on, on the interest of growing your business, I can't see that as being a bad thing um, in any ways. And, uh, and just, yeah, being able to help and sharing resources and tools. And we, a lot of us use the same software system. So a lot of us have great ideas of how we use it or somebody's having a problem with it or a glitch, figure that out. There's just so many, so many aspects, right? Employees, um, customers, resources, tools that we can be better by being friends with your neighbors. It's, it's. It's a no-brainer to me because, like I said, I just grew up like that. That's how I know it. You know, so. guys, uh, John Gustafson made a, a, a comment uh, in, in the in the Zoom chat about big egos. He said, small shops, big egos. Uh, did you guys have to put your ego on the shelf way back uh, as you were starting and started to be, get friends in the industry? Yes. <laughs> I'll, sure. be the first. Yeah. I'll go right out and submit it. Yeah, I had to put my ego on, uh, off to the side and realize it's, it's more than just about me. Yeah, when I, when I was first brought into our group with TechNet, I was I was really cautious about sharing and stuff because I didn't understand yet. Um, and it, and as I started to see how the other people around me were, they'd already learned that there's value in sharing. Um, you know, they started to share with me, and I was like, you know, why are they doing this? And then you know, it starts to settle in that this is really about just getting better because the better I am the more customers I'm going to have. I don't have to worry about other people across the street or down the block or wherever they are. Thank you for that. Paul, give me a summary. Yeah. One of the things, you know, and, and this is why we want to make our colleagues, our friends is that, you know, I've always said, I'll never lose a customer to another repair shop. I'll never lose a customer to another colleague. If my customer winds up at the shop up the street, I screwed up. And I, and I think that's an important message for all of us to remember. Our good customers don't go price shopping. They, they, they're going to stay with us. So if they're all of a sudden, you're, you're losing customers to another colleague, it's, it's, it's not them stealing the customers. We got to remember, it's, we got to look within. You lost them. Yeah. We lost them. They didn't steal them from us. And I think that's one of the biggest fears that other shop owners have is if I become friends with them and start sharing things, are they going to start stealing some of my customers? And, you know, am I giving them ideas to steal customers? And, and you're not. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a win-win. That could be a very upfront discussion. You know, we're, we're going we're gonna to survive better if we work together. Right. Yeah. Well, Mr. Pellman, um, it was Judy who brought me this whole topic uh, a few months ago. And she, she wanted to be on this so bad. But I said, eh, you or Brad, you or Brad. She goes, do Brad. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you for being here. Well, I'm, I'm going to give you the last word. You know, my last word is Paul actually said it very well, um, but I'm going to repeat it. And this really is about, you know, the friendship side of it and being friends with those shops and stuff. It enables you to have a lot of pathways to success to to win in your business because you have people to share with or share ideas. 
share tools, share equipment. Uh, and, and you're, and they're not bad mouthing you because you're not bad mouthing them. The key for me to, to have a great successful client base is to focus on me, do everything right in my business. I'm looking at everything. How does my business look from the outside? How does it look to the customer when they walk in? How are they treated? How was the service? Um, how was the phone answered? Every single thing that we can work on in our business to make me great. And then if I do that, why would somebody leave, right? Maybe they are going to leave because there's a personality clash or something like that. I can't do anything about that. But they're certainly not leaving me for any reason of, you know, the car wasn't fixed right or, or I don't like the way I was talked to or it was dirty or whatever. The big picture is focus on you, focus on your business, make it as great as it can possibly be. You'll have plenty of clients. They won't leave. And be friends with the shop down the street because then you have partners. Um, go to events, share your stories, share your ideas, and learn uh, from other people who have been there. Great summary, Brad. Thank you so much, Brad Pellman from Pellman's Automotive Boulder, Colorado, ASE Master Certified and has his AAM designation. Paul Marquat, shop owner, Northwoods Auto Techs, Rhinelander, Wisconsin, Napa trainer, and uh, was the Napa ASE Tech of the Year 2010. And Peter Foreman, Integra Tire, Langley, B.C., second generation shop owner. And his dad was a networking guy way back. And we should learn from that story. I loved it. Hey, guys, thanks. Have a great, great weekend. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Right, thanks. thanks, everyone. Yeah. See you, guys. Thanks for being on board to listen and learn from the premier automotive aftermarket podcast. Until next time.